Hiya folks. In my two recent videos, I've shown you how to use Spring AI to integrate generative AI in your Spring Boot applications. In this video, I'm going to continue that discussion around generative AI, but this time I'm going to take a step back from Spring AI and instead I'm going to talk about one of the libraries that inspired Spring AI, specifically Langchain. Langchain is a library for Python and Node that, like Spring AI, enables applications to interact with a generative AI API, such as OpenAI or Azure OpenAI. Because Langchain has been around a little longer than Spring AI, it has several features that are not yet available in Spring AI, but that'll likely change as Spring AI continues to evolve and pick up new features over time. I thought it was a good idea to give Langchain a look and see how it compares with Spring AI. And because understanding Langchain might help to understand Spring AI as it continues to evolve. I'll be using the Node.js version of Langchain because I know Node.js a little better than I know Python and because there are already plenty of great resources out there for using Langchain with Python. Of course, there's probably a joke to be made about how you've not experienced Langchain unless you've tried it in the original Klingon. But I digress. With that said, let's go ahead and get started and give this a spin. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick the tires on Langchain a little bit and see in some ways how it compares with Spring AI. You're gonna see a lot of familiar patterns that I apply here from when I did the Spring AI video. But to get started, I've already created a directory called Langchain Fun, and as you can see, there's nothing in it. And so I'm gonna start off by just creating a new node project by saying npm init. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanna say npm init ES6. This is gonna give us the ES uh, ECMAScript 6 import style of modules rather than the ones where common modules where you use require. Not a big deal, but it just, I'm starting to make myself use that a little bit more and get used to it. All right, now that we have that, I need to go ahead and while I'm here at the command line, I'm going to install OpenAI, the OpenAI library, so we can talk to OpenAI. I'm also going to install Langchain, the actual Langchain library that we're going to kick the tires on today. So I'm going to let that do its job, and then I'm going to open this up in VS Code. All right, so here it is in VS Code. Well done. Let's go ahead and create a file called index.js. Index.js is going to be the thing that contains all of our script that we're going to write during this video. And it is going to include, among other things, um, a, a function that we're going to, well, it's going to include several functions, but one function at a time that we're going to call as we show off this stuff. So to get started, I'm going to import OpenAI. Now this OpenAI is not the one from OpenAI API as it's as Copilot suggesting there, but instead it's one from Langchain slash LLM slash OpenAI. Basically it's the Langchain flavor of OpenAI so that Langchain knows how to work with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the simplest thing we could possibly do and that is we're going to ask it a simple question as a string and we're going to get the result back as a string. So to do that, I'm going to create a function called simple. This is going to be our first simple example. And our simple example is going to have in it, among other things, pardon any of the pop-ups that VS Code's doing. VS Code sometimes gets a little aggressive with its pop-ups. I apologize. What I'm going to do is try to ignore those myself. And then as I, as I finish up stuff, I'll let you see the whole thing on the screen at once. All right, so I'm going to, first off, I'm going to load up my model. So it's new OpenAI, that's the model we want. And I want the temperature. Now the temperature is something that, it basically determines how uh, complicated or how or more how precise uh, the response should be. And uh, I'll let you kind of research temperature for itself, yourself. If I remember the ordering right, it's basically the higher the number is, the less precise it necessarily will be. And the lower the number is, the more precise it'll be but it's in that it considers more or less documents or more or less information from the model. I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on some of the details myself, but that's the gist of it. All right, so with that said, I could go ahead and keep this here, but I just now realize a good place to put this is here because we're gonna reuse this a lot in a lot of our examples. And so I might as well just put it not inside of each function that I write, but just put it up here at the top level. That way I can reuse it over and over. And now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and ask the question. I'm going to get the question's response into a variable called response or a constant called response. And I'm going to say await uh, model dot 
not that, but it's close. Await dot or await model dot call, and I'm going to pass into the call method or the call function. I'm going to pass in my question. So what was the top song on the Billboard Top 100 Singles list for 1980? All right, I'll widen my window a little bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it widened enough to so we don't have to scroll at all. But maybe we can see more of it at once. So there we go. There, there's most of that line. So we're going to get that response back. We're going to ask that question. We're going to get the answer back into something called RES, and I'm just going to log it. It's just as simple as that. Console dot log res all right now that we have that uh, let's go ahead and kick the tires on it now what you should know is before I started recording I went ahead and set the OpenAI API key as an environment variable in my terminal window you're not gonna see me do that uh, I've already done it but if I were to do it again I would do this export OpenAI API key equal whatever your API key is you're gonna have to go get your own OpenAI key for yourself and do that here this is what I did earlier. I did some key here, whatever that key was, and that got me going. I need that. You need to have that set either as I've done here as an exported environment variable, or if you're using nodes.env file, .env library, you can put it in a .env file and load it up that way. It's up to you. My recommendation, though, is no matter how you do it, don't ever check that into your source code repository. All right, I'm going to clear the screen just to kind of get rid of some of the noise, and let's go ahead and give it a kick. So node index.js, and what did I not do right? Oh, I forgot to call simple. It's uh, simplest thing I could have done. I forgot to do it. So there we go. Simple is now being called. Let's give that another spin. And as you can see, the number one song on the Billboard Top 100 singles list for 1980 was Call Me by Blondie. Outstanding. We got an answer back. Now let's tweak that a little bit. And But we're not going to tweak it here. We're going to leave this code in place, and in a separate function I'm going to call I'm going to do something a little bit more interesting so simple generate and in simple generate I'm going to do something again just a little bit more interesting and that is I am going to say okay let me kind of work this out here I'm going to say uh, const model already or no I already have the model I'm not going to, don't need to do that yet I'm going to say const LLM result. So I'm, I'm actually expecting more than just a string back here. I'm getting something a little bit richer. I'm going to say await model.generate. I'm going to pass into it something, but I, I want to make sure this is at least somewhat easy to read. I'm going to pass it in an array of prompts. You could actually, actually add, pass in multiple prompts, but I'm only going to pass in one, and it's going to be the same one as I had before. What was the top song on the Billboard Top 100 singles list for 1980? I'm going to do all that, and then when I get my result back, I'm going to log it just like I did before. But whoops, pardon me. Console.log, and I'm going to because it's a richer object. I'm going to use JSON stringify to stringify it so that it's a little bit easier to read. I'm also while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to say console.log LLM result dot generations because I already know what's actually in there. I'm going to get the generation for the first prompt which is the only one we had for the first generation of that prompt text and I'm going to sys out that or I'm going to console log out that great let's give that a spin see if we had any if we if it works and it does the except it I'm not calling it's clear to me now I'm not calling the right one so I need to do this do this again I it's twice now I've forgotten that let's try to remember that from now on now let's try it and you can see I got the generations back. It says text. The top song in the Billboard Top 100 singles list for 1980 was Call Me. Of course, down here at the bottom, that also is echoed out as just that item. You can also see in the LLM output, you can see that uh, token usage is in there. We have 15 tokens that were part of our prompt. We have 40 or 25 tokens that were part of the actual response, the completion, for a total of 40 tokens. Now this is kind of important. If you're wanting to pay attention to your token count so that you don't have to pay high prices, uh, you might want to use this information to help fine tune your prompts, fine tune uh, what you're what you're working with. So uh, this is useful information. It basically it doesn't tell you how much you spent, but it gives you the numbers to figure out how much you spent. And of course that'll depend on which model you're using. I like to use GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's a really inexpensive uh, model to use. 
and it essentially if I remember right it cost point zero zero one five dollars per thousand tokens uh, that are prompt tokens and point zero zero two dollars for every 1,000 tokens that are response tokens. So again, we're talking about thousands of tokens before you even hit that much, and that's not even a penny's worth. So it's, it's really inexpensive. But what I've also learned is that by default, LangChain doesn't use GPT 3.5 Turbo. It uses uh, Text DaVinci 002. And so what I would like to do is to not use Text DaVinci 002. I'm not really even sure how much that costs, honestly. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to where I define my model. I'm going to break this configuration up into a couple of different lines uh, so I can add some additional things to it without making it ugly looking. I'm going to say model name GPT 3.5 Turbo. There we go. I'm now, by doing that, I'm now telling it to use GPT 3.5 Turbo. Let's kick it another time. But before we kick it another time, let's go ahead and do the next thing we need to do. And that is, let's go ahead and create a function that uses templates. Okay? All right. So here we go. I'm going to call this one, I'll say const prompt template. That's going to be the name of it. I'm going to say a sync. And before I forget again, I'm going to go ahead and call that. Make that change to call it. Then inside of here, I'm going to say const template. I'm going to define my template. Helps if I could type template correctly. And I'm going to say, again, what was the top song? So I'm going to use that same question as we had before, but the difference is I'm going to place a year in there. There we go. That's my template as a string. I'm going to take that and create it as a prompt by saying const uh, prompt equal new prompt template, which I need to remember to include in a moment uh, to go import upstairs at the at the top of the file but for now let's go ahead and keep doing this I'm gonna pass in as part of this um, yes I'm gonna pass in a template now what I could do here is I could say template template but since template is the name of the key and the variable a little shortcut I can have here is to say just simply template and then I'm gonna pass in input variables input variables and that's just a another array but it's an array of strings that it's expecting to get back so year is one of those so this is basically telling the, the prompt that, hey, you should expect a year back, uh, to get a year. There it is, okay? And now that I have that, that prompt defined, I can say const filled in prompt equal await prompt.format, and I'm gonna pass in the year, 1980, or it needs to be in a string, otherwise I, I've learned from experience that doesn't work if you just pass in a number. So the year, 1980. Great. Now let's say const, let's get our result back, await, uh, equal, await model.call, and we're going to pass in the filled in prompt. And let's console log it just like we would anyway. The only thing I, I got to remember to do, first off, I need to fix a typo there. Uh, I need to import this. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to say import prompt template from langchain slash prompts. There we go. And it looks like I think everything's in place. We have all the parts in place. We have our template defined. We have a prompt defined based on that template. We fill in the prompt with 1980. We call the the model, we get the result back and we log it. Yes, I think that's everything. Let's let's kick it and see if it works. Ah, oh, it did not work. What did I do wrong? Um, yes, cannot read properties of undefined includes. What did I do wrong? Is it that that sounds um, that sounds bad? Um, this is an error I've seen before where it if the variable name is not given, uh, but it looks like I'm doing it right. Let me check my notes, make sure everything looks right there. Um, it's not a very helpful error, I will tell you that much. Um, but yeah, oh, well, no, that looks right. Const prompt equal prompt template. I'm passing in the, the template. Yes, I've done that. Input variables. Variables, that's my mistake. There we go. That's what it was. All right, let's give it another shot. Let's clear this to get rid of some of the noise. 
Let's try it again. And there we go. The top song on the Billboard Top 100 singles list for 1980 was Call Me by Blondie. And if we wanted to try that again, just to, to see that it really did do something different, all we have to do is, you know, maybe not change that, but let's just go change this to 1981 and see if we get a different answer. I expect to get Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes. And there we are. Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes. Outstanding. All right. With that said, let's step away from the simple stuff and let's talk about something that LangChain does, in fact its name implies that it does, that Spring AI does not yet do and that is working with chains. Chains are, you can kind of think of them as little mini workflows, little mini pipelines that can work together to build up a prompt and submit it for you and get back a response. And so they, they're like repeatable uh, chains of things we've done. So if you look at what we've done here with our prompt template, we created the template, we created the prompt, we, mod we loaded up the model with some data, and then we called the model, uh, we, called, we loaded up the, I wouldn't say model, we loaded up the, um, the prompt input variables with some data, then we, then we called the model to get the, the answer back and we logged it. A lot of that can, is, is you know, we could all certainly repeat it, but it'd be a matter of copying and pasting a couple of different lines again. It would be nice if we could kind of repeat that over and over pretty consistently and just rely on the chain. It's sort of like capturing all of this in a function and then calling that function, but it's more at the um, LLM level or more at the, I'm sorry, at the lane chain level. So to show off how to do chains, I'm going to say, okay, const LLM chain, that'll be the name of the function that we're going to create is going to be again an asynchronous function and I'm going to go ahead and before I forget be sure and call it down here and there's one thing I need to do is I need to come up here and import something called LLM chain. Now what LLM chain is is it's one of a handful of well several actually um, chain implementations that LangChain has to offer. Okay. Uh, there's several of them. LLM chain is one of the simplest one it has to offer, but it has other ones. And we're going to see a few of those before we're done here today. But we have an LLM chain uh, function that we're going to use that in. And so I'm going to say const template equal, and I'm going to do the same template I had up here. What was the top song on the Billboard Top 100 singles list for some year? So that's my template. Then I'm going to say const prompt equal new prompt template. That's going to be the same thing we had before. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a little bit easier to read. Well, I don't know if it's easier to read, but it's definitely going to uh, cram it all in one line so I don't have to uh, scroll up and down as much. There we go. Get rid of that extra comma. And then one more thing, and we're ready to roll, is I'm going to say const chain equal new LLM chain and I'm going to pass into it, among other things, uh, the model as a with a key of LLM, so that's the actual LLM model we're passing into it, as well as the prompt. Okay, and there we go. Put a semicolon at the end of that, and we're ready to go. We now have a chain that has captured the idea of getting the uh, prompt, the template filling it in with some value, making a call to the model, and returning a response. So then all we really need to do is, is to use it. So I'm going to say const, and I'm going to actually make a couple of calls to it here because I'm going to try it a few times. We're going to ask for 1980, so I'm going to call res 1980 await chain.run. I'm going to pass in 1980. Now there's another way to do this. I'll do that on the second one to, to show the difference. But I'm going to say I'm going to console my console log res 1980. And then for 1981, we'll do the same thing. I might as well just copy and paste it. And I could stop right here and run it and it would do what I wanted to do. But I wanted to show you that another way of doing it is to do this. Instead of passing in just a simple string, pass in a dictionary that has the actual placeholder name in it. This, this approach is fine here. When you're just passing in a string, that is completely fine and it works perfectly when there is only one placeholder, when there is only one input variable. But, uh, and so that's why it works fine here. However, if you have two or more input variables, 
you have to give it a dictionary. You can't simply just give it a string. You have to give it a dictionary so it knows which one to plug it into. But we don't need to do that. We only have one, so we don't need to pass it in as a dictionary. We'll just pass in the one. We'll call it good. All right. So let's give that a spin. So we got Call Me by Blondie for 1980, and we have Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes for 1981. Fantastic, it worked. All right, so now let's talk about another kind of chain. It's called a conversation chain. And what a conversation chain allows us to do is to essentially carry on conversations with the LLM. And what that means is rather than asking you know, one one or two, you know, one-off questions and there's no context that's carried between the questions. Conversation chains have memory. And so they remember what was just asked and they remember the response that was just given so that they can use that as context for the next question. And this is very similar to how ChatGPT works, is it contains, it continues memory of what was asked before so that it can use that memory for later question. So to do that, I'm going to create a new a new one called const and we're going to call it conversation. It's a fine name. Async. I'm going to do that. There we go. All the, the bookkeeping's done. I'm going to come down here and call conversation instead of LLM chain. And then down in here, I'm ready to get going. Now before I can, I guess, before I can really start, start writing any code in here, there are a handful of other things I need to import here. I need to import, among other things, the chat open AI. This is a another model uh, from uh, Langchain that, and that's completely wrong, so let's ignore what uh, was suggested by Copilot and do chat models slash open AI. It's, a, it's another model, helps if I also could type right, open AI. All right, it is another API, another client API for open AI that knows how to deal with memory. I need to also import the conversation chain from langchain .chain, or langchain slash chains. That one actually looks right. And then I need to import some memory. We need to, some place to remember this. And so there is this thing called buffer memory that Langchain offers as well. Um, that's close enough. We'll say memory and then it'll be happy. All right, cool. And now we have all the three basic pieces we need to, to kick this thing off. All right, so let's go back down here to our conversation function. And in the conversation function, we're gonna say, okay, const chat model. So we have to create one of those. This is a little different than that open AI model that we created before. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it in here. New chat open AI. I'm gonna give it the model name of GPT 3.5 turbo, okay. I'm not going to bother setting the temperature. Uh, it'll be fine without setting the temperature. So const memory equal new buffer memory. This is where we're going to remember what happens between questions. We're going to create one of those. Then we actually need to create the chain. So chain equal new conversation chain. Um, and that looks right. Let me double check it. LLM is going to be my chat model memory. Yes, that looks correct. Very good. All right, then we can, now we're ready to ask the question. So I'm going to say const Result one, because I'm going to ask it a couple of questions. I'm going to say await chain.run. What we're going to ask the same question we've asked before. What was the uh, top song on the Billboard Top 100 singles list for 1980? <clears throat> Great. I'm going to go ahead and console log re re result one out there, and then we're going to ask a follow-up question. Now we need some context. I can't simply say. Um, I don't know what the song is yet, so I can't simply ask about the any questions about the song, but the conversation remembers what the song is. So I'm going to say const res2 equal await chain.run. What album was that on? And I'm going to log that out. And then I'm going to do one other question, const res3 um, it said, well, what year is that released? I don't really want to know what year it was released. I'm going to ask you something completely 
different than before, what was the record label? And I'm going to log that out. And I'm going to do one other quick thing to all of these, except maybe this last one. I'm going to put a blank line in there just so we have these things separated, okay? Just so it's easier to read a little bit later when we see the output. Okay. Now, I think everything's in place. Let's give that a spin. So the top song was Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. Well, that was clearly not the correct answer. Uh, for some reason, it chose to give us a different answer this time, but that's okay. Let's just go with it. Um, another song, so Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. It says that it was on Pink Floyd's album, The Wall, and the record label was Columbia Records. Now, I assume all that's correct, except for the first one. The first one is, <clears throat> we know, should be um, Call Me by Blondie, but we're just going to go with it. The point here is, is that even though it gave us the wrong answer for the first one, the context uh, was fed in to the questions that we asked for the second and third question about the album and the label. And that's another kind of chain that we have where we keep memory. Cool. How about we talk about one other thing? We'll talk about an output parser. I would really like to get this information out, not in as, as a string. I would like to get this information out as JSON. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to do another import. I'm going to do a lot of imports before we're done. We're not really necessarily using all these all the time because we keep changing our example. but. I'm going to import a thing called a structured output parser. This is something very similar to the output parsers that we saw with, um, with Spring AI. Now that's close, but not quite right. So I'm going to, at least it saved me some typing. So there we go. We have our structured output parser. It's one of a handful of parsers that are available with Langchain, and it's going to enable us to um, structure this into something a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to create a brand new function. So const. Uh, we'll call it structured output. That'll be a fine name. And I got to remember to call it. Let's not forget to do that again. And now we're ready to roll. All right, so const parser equal new structured output. Nope, not new structured output parser. Just structured output parser dot from names and descriptions. There's actually a couple of ways you could do this. You can do it from names and descriptions, which is what I'm going to do. There's another one that's using a kind of a Zod parser. I'm not exactly sure what Zod is. I gather that it's some sort of JSON uh, schema type thing, but this is, this is going to be fine for our purposes. I'm going to say, okay, we, we're going to have a song, which is the name of the song. We're going to have an artist, which is the name of the artist, and we're going to have a year which is the year that it was released and so we have names and descriptions we have the names that we expect in the results and we have the description and this is this description is there being mostly to be helpful so that the the model knows knows what we mean when we say year and what we mean when we say artist it could probably figure it out on its own but it's having those descriptions in there are going to be helpful okay then i'm going to come down here and say const template equal what was the top song on the billboards top 100 year list for year and then i'm going to add a little bit of extra information to it so i'm going to actually put this on multiple lines so to do that i'm going to use the back tick which is a javascript uh, idiom to to do that and on my next line i'm going to have format instructions so now i have two input variables that are going into this template i have the year and i have the format instructions great so all I have to do to, to do that is do what we did before. We're going to do the prompt template, say prompt equal new prompt template. And what we're going to pass into prompt template is essentially the input variables that we're going to pass it. Uh, among other things, we're going to pass in the template. Fine. We're going to also pass in the input variables, uh, but not, not for format and instructions. We're going to pass in just the year as an input variable, and instead for for format instructions, we're going to have something that's called a partial variable or partial variables. And what partial variables are, they're, they're really something that's not part of the question itself. Uh, the best way to describe them, they're not part of the question itself. They're part of uh, some of the additional instructions that are being given in the prompt. So partial variables, format instructions, parser dot get format instructions. Okay. And that should do the trick there. Uh, now we just need to um, call it. Now we have that prompt. 
we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna create the chain. So const chain equal new LLM chain, the same kind of chain we created before. We're gonna pass in the LLM model, we're gonna pass in the prompt, but in addition to all those things, we're gonna pass in an output parser, specifically our parser that we created. And now we're gonna say chain.run, we're gonna pass in 1980, and rather than deal with it as, as uh, Copilot was thinking we were gonna do, we're not gonna deal with it directly as promises. I'm just gonna assign it to a result and call a wait just like we have before. I'm gonna say console.log, res, and fix the indentation on that. And we call it, we're calling structured output, so we're good to go. Let's give that another spin. Call me, we got at least got the answer correct now. We have call me by Blondie 1980 and you'll notice we got it back in JSON format. Now just to prove to you that it's not just a string that looks like JSON, let's actually format this by saying um, json.stringify res null2. And for those of you who aren't familiar with JSON stringify, I'm basically saying here, take this, this object, this JSON object, I don't remember what the second parameter is, I always set it to null, but the third one is um, the indentation, okay? And so then when I run it, it's gonna look like that. Great, it worked. We have now shown how to do a couple of different chains. We did a chain that's a simple LLM chain. We used a chain that gave us conversations, so we had memory between our questions. And then we used um, we used an output parser to get JSON response from our LLM chain. Great, we have all the stuff in place now. There's one other thing I'd like to fit into this video if I can we'll talk about how to do embeddings and vector stores. All right, to do embeddings and vector stores, there's a lot of things we have to, to do. We have to, first off, we have to give it a vector store. And there's this vector store, I don't honestly know what it stands for, I could probably look it up, but I'll leave it up to you to look it up if you're curious enough, called HNSW lib for node. I'm gonna install that. It's essentially a vector store, that's what it's gonna give us. There we go. Took a little longer than I was expecting it to, but there we go. We should have it in place now. All right, let's go back over here. We're gonna have to do some imports. And I apologize, there are a lot of imports we're gonna have to do here, so it's gonna take a minute, but we'll get there. So we're, first off, we're gonna have to import our hnsw lib. We're gonna import that from langchain slash vector stores slash hnsw lib. Okay, great. Again, we're not importing hnsw lib directly from its own library. We're importing it via Langchain. Langchain will deal with direct uh, dealing, it'll work with dealing with hnsw lib itself. We just have to import it here uh, from Langchain. We're also gonna import, uh, not an open, not a vector store, but an open AI embedding. So this is what's gonna enable our embeddings for open AI. And we're gonna in, in, we're gonna import that from langchain slash embedding slash openai. That's actually correct what uh, Copilot was suggesting. And now we're gonna import a text loader. We're gonna need something that's gonna load this text. If you remember, I created my own custom text loader for Spring AI. Uh, this one's a similar, but also a little bit different. This one's a little bit more clever than the one I created. But it's gonna be document loaders slash uh, fs slash text. Okay. And that's gonna load our text loader. And now we have a couple of things we're gonna to have to deal with. We're gonna create another kind of chain. It's called a runnable chain. And what runnable chains do is they, you give them several different things and it's gonna basically, the output of, it's a list of things that need to be done and the output of one is gonna go in as the input of the next one. That's essentially what a runnable chain is. So I'm gonna go ahead and import those things. Um, I'm actually importing two things, a runnable sequence, which is the chain itself and a runnable pass-through, which essentially we'll see a little bit later. This is what's gonna allow um, some data just pass through without being processed directly. It, it, it's a little bit unclear how that works perhaps, but um, you'll see how it, maybe see how it works a little bit later. Just know that we need it for now. So I'm gonna load in, load this in from langchain slash schema slash runnable, not runnables, just runnable. Fine. And then I have one more thing, and I think we're gonna have all of our imports done. I'm gonna import a string 
output parser. Just It's a simple output parser that just takes whatever it gets and outputs it as a string. Nothing fancy. Uh, from lang chain slash schema slash output parser. Great. I think that's everything we need. And now we're ready to actually start using this thing. So let's come down here. Let's create our, our brand new function that's going to do all this work for us. So const, I'm going to create a new function called embeddings. I'm going to make sure I call embeddings before we're done here. And then inside of embeddings, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to first off, I'm going to const um, loader equal new text loader. I'm going to give it a path to some file on the file system. Specifically, I'm going to load in the burger battle rules that we used in the spring video. All right, now to do that, I have to have that file. So let's go ahead and create that file. I'm going to call it bbrules.txt. And so that you don't have to watch me type all the rules from memory, I do have those handy that I can copy in here. There we go. There are all the rules for burger battle. Go back to our code. We've loaded it up. And now that we've loaded it up, we are going to need something that is going to uh, essentially load the docs. I'm going to load all the, we're going to ask the loader to load all the docs into this constant called docs. So await loader.load. Okay. Now that we have all the docs, we're going to take those docs and we're going to throw them in our vector store, our HNSW lib vector store. So I'm going to say const vector store equal await hnsw lib dot from documents i'm going to pass in among other things the the constant of documents as well as a new open ai embedding so this is this open ai embeddings is the thing that is going to tell the doc store how it should be broken up so that it can be used for embeddings no big deal there if we want to dig into this deeper we can perhaps in another video but for now this is good enough and now that i have that i'm ready to start forming my prompt so I'm going to say prompt text equal, and I'm going to put this on multiple lines. So I'm going to use the back ticks to do that. And my first line is going to be, I'm just going to copy it because there's a lot of text here. It's essentially the same text I used in the spring video with just a little bit of extra stuff in it. So there it is. You're assisting with questions about a specific board game. Use information from the document section to provide accurate answers. And if you're unsure, simply state that you don't know. The, really, what I gave in Spring was this much, and Spring AI uh, worked out the fact that this, this much of it went into the system uh, role, and the, this much of it ultimately went into the user role. But here, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to do that with lane chain. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure how to do that. It's probably possible, but I'm not sure how to do the different system and user roles yet with lane chain. So I'm putting the question directly here in my prompt text, just to, with another placeholder. So that's all that is. If I figure out someday how to use lane chain and use the different system and user roles, I could probably take this out of here and then ask the question separately. But for now, we'll just go with this. All right, cool. Uh, now we're gonna define something that a, a function kind of in place here a function called serialize docs and it's going to take those docs whatever it's given and it's going to serialize them by saying docs.map whatever doc it is doc.page content which is a, a member variable of the document object we're going to join those with a line break not two line breaks that's not necessary I mean two would work but only need one and now this function here is not something we're going to call we're gonna give it to the chain so that the chain can run this after it has retrieved those docs and so now we're ready to create the chain let's say const chain equal runnable sequence we're gonna create that from and this is where we give it an array of things we want it to do one after the other the first thing we're going to give it is not actually something to do. It's actually the the the, the model or not once model data models overloaded here. It's the the placeholder data, the very input variable data for our prompt. So it's going to have in it context, which is as you can see is up here under documents. Context is going to use the text retriever. Oops, retriever dot pipe serialized docs so basically we're loading that up and then for our question which is 
that right there. We're going to place in there um, the new runnable pass-through. What this is saying here, this is what I talked about earlier, what this is saying here is take whatever the, whatever comes into this chain and just pass it right through into here. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pass it right through into this question, question uh, input variable. Then we're going to pass in our prompt. That's our our prompt that's going to have the placeholders and whatnot in it. We're going to give it the model, which is our chat GPT, our, our, I'm sorry, our open, yeah, our chat GPT model from OpenAI. I'm going to say model, and then we're going to say, okay, take whatever comes out of that and use the string output parser. Fantastic. Now we're ready to try it. I hope there's a lot of typing there, so I hope I didn't screw anything up. Oops, sorry, I scrolled a little bit too much there. I'm going to say const, so we're going to get our result back equal await oops await oops if I could type chain dot invoke I'm gonna invoke that chain by saying does burger force field protect from burger apocalypse which is more or less the same question we asked in the spring AI video we're gonna sys out that and we're gonna see what happens now, assuming I got this right, which I did a lot of typing there, so there's a lot of opportunity for me to make mistakes. So I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't work first time around, but assuming it does work, we should get an answer to the question, does a burger force field car protect from burger apocalypse? Ah, as, as expected, we did get an error. Retriever is not defined. It seems that I forgot to define the retriever along the way. Yes, that that is something that I would forget to do. So I'll tell you what, let me go fix that. Yeah, there it is. It's something as simple as this. I, I totally forgot. Um, kind of dumb here. But const retriever equal, when from our vector store, we're going to use, we're going to call it, we're going to get itch retriever. I think that's everything though. Basically, what we're saying is that at some point in here, we're loading up our vector store with documents and as our retriever which I defined here we're getting that context from by calling the retriever and asking it to pipe out the serialized documents that it that it found okay so let's try that again oh, I've still got a problem uh, so get retriever is not a function oh yeah still my bad I'm, I'm so used to being in the Java world where everything's getters and setters in this particular case it's as retriever. Okay, let's clear the screen to get rid of some of the noise and let's try it one more time. <laughs> we still got a problem. Uh, not terribly uh, surprising. I did anticipate that I would make some mistakes, um, but this one I'm a little unsure on. Prompt text. Oh, you know what? I have never actually created the prompt. I created the prompt text, but I forgot to create the prompt. Oh, I'm going to get this right someday. So, okay, maybe, maybe this 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 one's gonna do it from template prompt text all right let's see if that works clear the screen get rid of the noise let's run it again and we still got it wrong because it's not supposed to be new prompt template it's supposed to be just prompt template okay oh one more time hopefully this is gonna work 20th times a charm right all right, there we go. Now, it's actually working now. And let's worry about that first line a little bit later. For now, let's just talk about the second line that says, no, Burger Force Field does not protect against Burger Apocalypse. That is, in fact, true. That is actually part of the rules. That's something that surprised me as I'm working through these examples. It surprised me because I've been playing it wrong all along. Whenever I play Burger Battle, uh, we allow the Burger Force Field to protect from Burger Apocalypse. But it turns out that's not true. The AI brought that to my attention. I thought, well, the AI is crazy. It doesn't know what it's talking about. No, I went and read the rules and it does not protect from burger apocalypse. The AI is in fact correct. Now that first line, that's the K factor. That's the top K factor. It's basically when we're going and searching for the through the vector store, uh, we're, we don't want every document that matches necessarily because even, you know, that's the whole idea of a vector store is to help us find the most relevant documents so that we're not loading the entirety of our documents into the prompt. We want to find the most relevant ones. And by default, it's going to find the most relevant four documents. It's not even going to find all of the relevant documents. It's only going to find the top four most relevant documents. But it turns out, because of the burger battle rules, as you can see here, are fairly short, there was only one document in the first place. It never even split this document up into multiple pieces. 
it's only giving us uh, one document. So that, that little message you get there is it's just simply saying the K, uh, the default K4 is greater than the number of elements. So it's, it's turning K down to one just because there's only one document to find. Not a big deal. We have a very simple data set. Once you have a more interesting, if you have one document that's huge or multiple documents or even multiple documents that are huge, uh, you're never gonna see this error because the K number is gonna be a lot higher. All right, let's try this with another couple of questions. Uh, let's, whoops, not, not in this file. Let's go, let's go ask another question. Does Burger Force Field protect from Burger Bomb? Let's try that. Yes, Burger Force Field does protect your burger from Burger Bomb, and that is in fact accurate. That is in fact what the rules say. Um, essentially, the Burger Force Field protects from all battle cards in Burger Battle except for burger apocalypse all right all right let's see is there anything else we can ask like um let's see what is the picky oops picky eater card let's ask what that one is see if that helps anything the picky eater card is a battle card that allows the player to throw another player's lettuce tomato or onion in the graveyard that is accurate. I know how to play the game and I do recognize the picky eater card. So that is true. And let, let's just ask one more question because we did, we talked about it a little bit but we kind of danced around it. What is the burger bomb card? The burger bomb card is a battle card that allows you to blow up another player's burger by sending their ingredients to the graveyard, essentially sending it to the discard pile. Awesome. All right, and with that said, let's do a little bit of recap. We just saw how to use LangChain in Node.js to perform some of the same kinds of generative AI tasks that I used Spring AI for in the two most recent videos. Since LangChain, along with Llama Index, inspired Spring AI, Getting to know how LangChain works will help to understand Spring AI as it continues to mature. We also saw how to use a few different kinds of chains in LangChain to create many workflows for submitting prompts and handling responses. This is one feature that Spring AI does not yet have, although there is already some foundational code in the Spring AI repository, so that's sure to come along soon. To be clear, I am in no way pitting LangChain against Spring AI. Both have their place. Although LangChain is a rich library, it's only available for Python and Node.js. Spring AI aims to bring the possibilities afforded by generative AI to Java and Spring applications, inspired by how LangChain and Llama Index work. As Spring AI continues to grow, it'll no doubt be just as valuable in the Java ecosystem as LangChain is in the Python and Node.js ecosystems. And with that said, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something. Here's where you can follow me on the social medias. Here is my website. And here, a little bit of information about my books. You should check those out too. Spring in Action covers um, everything you want to know about Spring and Spring Boot. And Build Talking Apps for Alexa helps you build voice applications for the Alexa platform. But if you don't remember anything else on this slide, remember this. The website www.habuma.com. That'll help you find all the information you need to know about how to contact me via social media, where to find my books, other videos I've published, as well as other things that I, I like to throw out there. So again, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.